Thanks very much, Amy Stone, and welcome to Illinois State Hancock Stadium. It's our annual Sports Channel High School Football Fest. Classes 1A through 6A, taking you all through tomorrow evening. Along with Jack McInerney, I'm Mike Lederman. Good to be with you again. It is an exciting time here downstate. Shanoa against Northwestern, the Class 1A. If you don't think this is big stuff, Shanoa is just up the road, up the I-55. Take a look at this morning's paper here. You can see the whole town is excited, especially in the smaller communities. The whole town usually gets involved. Well, this is a co-op program, which means several communities are involved in one team. So that does unite all those communities in that particular area. And it's a very exciting time. And certainly at Thanksgiving, they'll always remember. And just about everybody from uh, both teams' towns is uh, here right now. Shanoa, 11-2 on the regular season and the playoffs. They lost a couple of games during the regular season, but finished strong. They have come through the playoffs well. They are led by Kyle Bracey, who is their go-to running back, and their quarterback by the name of Dan Butler. Well, Kyle Bracey is really the go-to guy out of the eye. He has over 1,500 yards, 22 touchdowns, a hard inside runner, and when the time is tough, that's who they go to. And Dan Butler, the quarterback, also uh, doesn't have spectacular statistics, but gets the job done. Well, he really does a nice job running the football. Doesn't throw a lot, but when he does, it's very accurate and it's for big plays. Meanwhile, Northwestern, which is, as we said, a co-op, an amalgam of several communities to the west of the state near Macomb. So much for the geography lesson. This is an outstanding football team, 13-0. They average 42 points a ball game, give up fewer than five. They have got several two-way players, including their quarterback, Jackson Jones, and also a fine running back by the name of David Spencer. Jones is really something. Well, Jones is real special. You talk about the man leading him as a quarterback, but also what I think is so interesting is that he's the inside linebacker on defense, plays both ways, and in today's mark in high school football, that's outstanding. And Spencer, he is a 1,400-yard rusher, gets the job done. He's another go-to guy. When the time gets tough, they go to the tailback. Well, it's time to go to the public addresser right now. Jeff Fritzen will give us today's starting lineups. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the starting lineups for today's 1A championship game. Introducing the defense for Shanoa High School. At left end, number 83, Nathan Kylander. <laughs> At left tackle, number 68, Corey Griffith. At right tackle, number 61, Adam Owens. At right end, number 25, Darren Bresner. Linebacker, number 76, Chad Augsburger. Linebacker, number 7, Chad Seaman. Linebacker, number 51, John Serta. At defensive, defensive back, back number 20, 20 Craig, Craig Christensen. Christensen. <laughs> defensive back, back number 85, 85 Jason Lane. Lane. Defensive back, back number 19, Keith Traxel. 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 And at safety number 44, Kyle Bracey. The Redbirds are coached by Dean Magro. Number 53, Sam DeCounter. At center, number 60, Nathan Lester. Right guard, number 57, Andy Royer. Right tackle, number 58, Ryan Kramer. Right end, number 89, Jordan Danner. At quarterback, number nine, Jackson Jones. Halfback, 
number 44, David Spencer. Halfback, number four, Tyler Walker. At fullback, number 40, Devin Lennox. And the head coach for Northwestern, Tim Lafferty. Tim Lafferty and the Scioto, Northwestern, La Harte, Thunder. All three places. That's one big team right here. They're 13-0. Also with us today, we welcome our broadcast partner on the sidelines, Yvonne Simmons. Good morning, Yvonne. Good morning, guys, and welcome again to the Class 1A Finals that pits local favorites, Chinoa Redbirds and Scioto Northwestern. Chinoa has been here before, but it's been since 1979, and they won the state finals. They're hoping to keep the dream alive after an early season loss last year, or excuse me, a quarterfinal loss, a second round loss last year to Arcola. They're hoping to keep that dream alive. They're here now. Northwestern, they have never been here before, but they're at 13 and 0. And after losing season in the 90s, they made a breakthrough in 1995. They're here now, and they're looking pretty tough. If you want to know where these uh, teams are, we do too. We've got a map here for you to show you, show you where these teams are. Shinoa is about 20 minutes down the road on 55. Shiona Northwestern, they're located near Macomb, which is by, uh, which is by Western Illinois. So we'll take it back up there, and we'll get more to you. Meanwhile, on the kickoff, we see that uh, David Spencer takes the ball on the squib kick and advances it to the 15-yard line. So tough field position to start things off, and they will break out with Jackson Jones, the quarterback. There he is, number nine, 6'3", 205-pound senior, slowed somewhat by a rib cage injury, but it has not uh, inhibited that much where he can't play. They come out in the eye. Devin Lennox, the fullback. Spencer is the tailback. And they pitch it to Spencer. And David Spencer cuts up across the 15. Doesn't get much. Stopped by Adam Owens, number 61. There is Jones. Spencer, Devin Lennox, the fullback. He gets the tough yards. Tyler Walker, Joe DeBold, the uh, tight ends. Jordan Danner, they go with two tight ends. Up front, Adam Brown, Sam DeCounter, Lester Royer, and Ryan Kramer. Kramer is a junior, but he is very large at 270 pounds. Second down, call it a gain of one. Jones inside this time. It goes to Devin Lennox, and Lennox gets very little, maybe another yard. As we take a look at the Shanoa defense, so Chad Seaman and Chad Augsburg are in on the stop. Up front. Kylander, Griffith, Owens, and Bresner, they are all seniors, as is just about all of this defense. Then you've got uh, Seaman, Augsburger, Serta, Lane, Christensen, Traxel, and Bracey, Kyle Bracey at safety. Brings up a third down passing situation here, but don't be surprised if Jackson Jones bootlegs the ball and takes it on his hip. Jones to throw. Looking for Tyler Walker, broken up nicely by the defensive back. It looked like number 20, Craig Christensen in there. And that will bring up the first punting situation here on the pass. You can see uh, him rolling out right here. He's got a man wide open, kind of short, short arms it a little bit, but he does put the ball on the money on an out route. Would have been a first down. Good defense played there. The punter is Jordan Danner. He averages 33 yards a kick. Jones was doing the punting until he injured his ribcage, so now Danner will do it. He's filled in the past few games. Seaman and Bracey are the deep back standing at midfield. Punt takes a nice roll for Northwestern, and it will be down in Scioto Northwestern Territory. 30-yard punt, no return, and the Redbirds will go to work from the opposition's 47-yard line. Let's take a look at how they got where they got. The road to the finals for, for Chinoa. Deer Creek, Mackinac, Lexington, El Paso had defeated this team in the regular season, but uh, obviously the Redbirds have prevailed in the playoffs, and then a good win over Galena in the semifinal, 28-15. Wingback is Christensen. He is in motion. Butler, the quarterback, and the handoff for nice yardage goes to number 25. Darren Bresner, the fullback. Jackson Jones coming in to make the stop. A good game 
bring up a second and about four. Take a look at the country company starting lineups for Shanoa. Butler, the quarterback, Bracey, Seaman, Bresner, Nathan Kylander, and Cody Leach are the receivers. They don't throw much. The two Griffith twins on the line, Atkins, Augsburger, and Owens. And here, once again, a good run by Dan Butler, who takes it himself. And he gets first down yardage, the first first down of the ball game before he is bumped out of bounds by Jones and Devin Lennox. Looking now at the defense for Scioto, Northwestern, LaHarp. We'll call him Northwestern. Royer, Moore, Kramer, Housewright. That's a big front line. Walker, Waldinger, and Spencer in there. In the defensive backfield, the linebackers will be the ball Jones, Lennox, and Smith on first down now. Once again, the ground game working for Shinoa. It is Bresner. Bresner, about a seven-yard gain, stopped by Tyler Walker and Jackson Jones. We see Jones very active on defense already, Jack, as the ground game for Shanoa working well. From the 24-yard line, second and a long two. And that's going to be a longer two. It's going to be seven. A delay a game. Off. Delay or a... Uh, the offensive lineman did apparently go before the snap. We will check with the official, the referee today, Paul Tomazzoli from Hillsborough, leading this five-man crew. There are the officials. Ball, motion, offense. Motion on the offensive line. Down. So instead of second and three, we go back to the 29-yard line. Second and eight. Two backs in the backfield, Christensen the wing. Christensen again goes in motion, and they go with the pitch to Christensen, and Craig Christensen pursued by Jackson Jones, close to first down yardage, swinging the right side. Well, they run the option. They go inside hard with Darren Bresner. He's their inside man with over 900 yards. You can see the dive fake there, which draws the linebackers in. They run the option outside. Quarterback pitches it. A lot of running room. I think he comes up about a yard short. Good effort. So they will call it third and one clock ticking. Eight minutes, 47 seconds to go. This is the first offensive series for Shanoa. And trying for the first down. And should be there with Bresner again. Stopped by Ben Housewright, six foot, 175 pounds, senior defensive end. We didn't talk a lot about Bresner in the in the uh, opening. We didn't talk about him at all. But when you have a tailback that goes over a thousand yards, your fullback has 900. That fullback is a key factor. And again, they go inside, and a couple of more yards coming up with Butler, who ran for 500 yards in the regular season. Jackson Jones making the stop. Dan Butler, 5'11", 175 pound quarterback, not afraid to go in there. We'll take a look at the weather. And the threat of rain is here, but it's not there. The wind is coming out of the south, 35 degrees, 50% humidity, partly cloudy, we hope will be the forecast, but there is rain predicted for later in the day. And this time the short handoff and the ball is free. And it looks like the Thunder says they have it, and they do with the recovery made by Devin Lennox, number 40, the first turnover of the game, and it kills the Shanoa drive and a big break for the Thunder. You can see they're looking to run the option right here. The handoff right there. The second hit is what pops the ball out. It's on the ground and a big turnover early. Credit Joe DeBold with that turnover. And back on offense go the Thunder. So Shanoa marching nicely, marching smartly on the ground as the drive killed by a turnover. Once again, Jackson Jones takes him out in the eye. Lennox and Spencer behind him. And the give is to Spencer, and David Spencer again stopped as he tries to swing the left side. Good job by number 20, Craig Christensen. Also number 61, Adam Owens. Good movement by the defensive line and linebackers. That was a straight zone play on the outside, and everybody just slid down and took up all the seams and did a nice job of uh, pursuing. One yard on the carry, second down and nine. Split right is Tyler Walker. Huge splits on the offensive line here. Jackson Jones over the middle. He's got his man. He's got Jordan Danner, the tight end, and that will be first down yardage out to the 34-yard line. Jordan Danner 
Eight receptions on the regular season. Jason Lane bringing him down. 13-yard play. Tight end just coming over the middle. Comes right underneath the linebackers. Comes just right up inside on the hash. Drops the ball in there for a first down. Nice throw. Nice route. Jackson Jones threw 52 for 100 this uh, past season so far. And math, folks, that's a 52% completion rate. You can even figure that out up here. And no calculator. Not Very much impressive. there. 44, Spencer, the ball carrier. David Spencer doesn't get much going up front. Chad Augsburger, the leading tackler on this team, making the, sp making the stop. No gain on the play. It's second down, 10 at the 33-yard line. And there is the huddle for Northwestern, and we'll show you how they got to the finals. They did it the same way they did it the regular season, just beating opponents handily. No gain on the play, second and 10. Receiver split wide right. And up the middle they go with Spencer, and Spencer gets five yards close to the 40-yard line before he is brought down. Toyota Road to the finals. You can see they did have a couple of squeakers against Monmouth Warren and then Greenfield, which is a perennial power in 1A, 14 to 10 the win, but they are here. They made the trip in last night coming up from the Macomb area, or we should say the across from the Macomb area. Waldinger split to the right on a third down five. Jones, right open, looks for Waldinger, has his man short of the 50-yard line. It will be first down yardage, brought down by Leach. Basically just a little roll here. They block backside. Nice out cut, not by the tight end, but the, by the flankers coming in your screen right there. The, the corner plate inside him gave him an awful lot of room. Good throw, nice first down. Cody Leach there on the stop. So first and 10 from the 48-yard line of Northwestern. They go into the wishbone set now. And the give is to Tyler Walker to midfield. He is brought down by Augsburger. Give him two. Fast first quarter so far as you look at Tim Lafferty. Lafferty actually dressed for the first two-way championship game back in 1974. He went to Alexis High School. He was a freshman. He was all excited. He was down here. He was dressed, and of course, he did not play being a freshman. Well, compliment to him, he still looks like a freshman, doesn't he? One of those youthful guys. Actually, a young Jim Leland, if you will. That's, that's what Jim looked like before all those miles went on. Now close to first down yardage here as Jackson Jones takes the ball. He will be about a yard short at the 43 with four minutes and 15 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Now that run uh, was kind of a distinction as to why he is also an inside linebacker at 6'3", 205 pounds. He ran that just like a fullback. A big, tough, strong kid. Made all state as an inside linebacker. Very unusual. I don't know that I've ever remembered a quarterback making all state as a linebacker. Again, the wishbone set. We are scoreless. Under four minutes to go. First quarter. Class 1A and Jones looking for the first down. This will be close. Stopped in there by Augsburger, Griffith, and number 61, Adam Owens. And they will move the chains over on the far sideline. Toyota Northwestern in the, as they describe it, the Notre Dame uniforms. The blue with the gold helmets. The cardinal in white for Shinoa. First and ten. And the handoff inside. It goes to Spencer coming across from the left halfback spot. He is tripped up short of the line of scrimmage. Once again, Chad Augsburger makes the stop. Chad is their major defensive force. 5'11", only 180 pounds, but uh, he leads this team in tackles and bench presses about 300 pounds. So you can see he is an anchor there of the defense for the Redbirds. Back to the eye. Receiver split left. Second and 11, a loss of one. And the play action. Jones being pursued and down he goes. Bresner gets him for the sack. Short of the 50-yard line. Play action pass, Mike, off of the prior run. 
you'll see the counter look here with the garden tackle pulling. That's to get the linebackers to, to fly over. They didn't. They stayed home. They tried to slide the fullback out in the flat. They didn't bite on it. Big loss for Northwestern. Joe DeBold there missed his block and didn't try to uh, didn't try to make the clip because that's what it would have been. Anyway, there's timeout on the field. Two minutes, 36 goes, seconds to go first quarter. We are scoreless. Clock shows two minutes, 36 seconds to go. First quarter, no score. The Northwestern Thunder had been driving, but now they face a third and 19, having the ball for 11 plays and over five minutes. Again, it's Jackson Jones with the play action. Shoots this one. Nobody home looking for Joe DeVold, but the closest jerseys were wearing white. So once again, a punting situation here arises in the Class 1A game. Jordan Danner will try to pin Shanoa back, but he will be going against a 15-mile-an-hour win. Number 24, Josh Champion, and number 7, Chad Seaman. Well, this is one of those situations when you're playing on AstroTurf, you want to catch the football. Get some big bounces here. Very high snap. End over and kick. Takes a good thunder roll and then comes dead at the 18 yard line so a 32 yard punt no return and Shinoa which had a good drive stopped by a turnover will get the ball back but there is a flag on the field you look there at uh, Danner and the official it hit the uh, it hit the, uh, the kickers in the head as far as the punt when it first came down so they have their choice now. Um, in other words, they interfered with the catch. Even though he wasn't going to catch it, it hit them before it hit the ground. Explaining the options here to Chad Augsburger, one of the co-captains of Shinoa Jack. Again, describe what you were saying, even though there was no attempt to catch the ball. They still, it's one of those situations where it hit the defender, in other words, the ball is in the air, so the defender now is the punting team, not the receiving team. It hit him in the head on a fly, and so there was no option there to catch the ball, even if the receiver wasn't close to it. It has to, you have to be able to allow them to catch the ball. There's Dean Magro. The coach says, yes, take the penalty, and we'll show it to you again. Right here is where I caught it. There, right there on the noggin. And that will be a major penalty here we'll take it back and it looks like they're going to kick it again well your choice there is they could take the ball down there or kick it again in this situation obviously they want them to kick it again they're kicking into the wind uh, it was not a good kick initially and uh, the key here is again if it's not a shank to catch the ball well, it's a 15 yard penalty so the ball goes back to the 35 yard line fourth and 35 if you're counting and Danner again will kick to the freshman champion and to Chad Seaman, number seven. There's why we had him kick it again. And this one catches all sorts of air, and right at midfield, it is down. So once again, Shanoa will have excellent field position after a 15-yard punt. They gained 30 yards by taking that penalty, having him kick it over again. Well, Shanoa, not known for its offense, especially compared to Scioto Northwestern. And again, if you hear us refer to Scioto or Northwestern or La Harp, it's the guys in blue. Once again, Kyle Bracey breaks into the secondary, and he gains first down yardage down to the 40. Good, powerful one by Kyle Bracey. Spencer and Craig Smith combining on the tackle. But again, a good effort by Shinoa to start a series. Well, Kyle Bracey's used to carrying the ball inside. 230 carries during the season. And you can see right there why he has a 6.6 .6 average and 22 touchdowns. He runs tough. Jason Lane splits left. Bracey goes in motion. Single back now. Butler to throw. He's got his man Seaman and Chad Seaman inside the 20. Defended by Walker, but a beautiful pass play. And Shanoa on the march. 21-yard pickup. Well, that motion where they sent the back motion opposite really set that play up because it drew the safety over to the motion. The safety had a slide over. You can see him sliding towards the motion. And there's the back going in where the safety was. So just that motion going in the opposite way was the adjustment the secondary had to make. 
to make that open for the receiver. Wingman in motion. Again, they go inside down to the 15-yard line. Good variety of play calling. Devin Lennox making the stop on Darren Bresner. Bresner's a big kid, too, 6'3". Already 66 offensive yards for Chanoa, only 32. For Sayota. Both teams play basically the same defense. It's a variation of 4-4, and they've both done a real good job all season in that defense. Chanoa running off the right side a great deal behind Augsburger and Owens. This time they try to go left. Nice pitch. And Christensen... Wrestle down inside the five-yard line. David Spencer makes the stop on Craig Christensen. Christensen only 5'7", 175 pounds. Used on the option. Watch him here. Dive fake. Pulls those linebackers inside. You can see right there the outside linebacker coming up. Somebody missed an assignment. Big gainer. So a first and goal on the five-yard line. 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter. And Chanoa will get off at least one play. They bring in Keith Traxel. They line him up at tight end. Double tight end set. Gracie, close. Touchdown, Chanoa. Kyle Bracy goes the final five yards inside, right off tackle. His 23rd touchdown of the season. Dig Magro has got himself a 6-0 lead here in the first quarter. Well, the key to that run was not only his quickness of getting in there, but the offensive line doing a great job up front, creating the seam up in there for Bracey to pop up inside. The unsung heroes, the offensive line. Bracey's 23rd touchdown. This is Griffith for the extra point. And we should specify it is Corey Griffith. Either way, it's up, it's good, and we'll show you the touchdown again. A 7-0 Redbirds lead. Nothing fancy, just kind of an isolation right here. See the fullback leading up, nice block. Linebackers are pinned inside just temporarily. That's all he needed, six points. You can see him cutting them off inside right there. Nice job by the offensive line. And Bracey just bangs it up inside. So for Shinoa. Might call them a home team here. They uh, play not on this field. They play up the road, and they, like the Illinois State Redbirds, are the Redbirds. And they have grabbed a 7-0 lead with 15 seconds to go here in the first quarter after that scoring drive set up by the penalty in the short Thunder Punt. Now, Craig Christensen's going to kick off. Watch here. They will probably squib this one. And they do. Tough to handle on the turf. Remember, that's a free ball. And the Thunder does cover that kick. 44, David Spencer. At their Number own 20, David Spencer makes the play. But those squib kicks, especially on the turf, look out. They're trouble. They really are. And actually, there were three problems there. Those linemen are diving for the ball. And you want to dive for a squib kick because you lose all your mobility. You want to play it like a baseball player. Keep your feet underneath and just move your feet and shuffle. Get the ball. Well, Northwestern in an unusual position, trailing. Granted, it's early. Here's Jackson Jones, shoots this one over the middle, but well behind Danner, the tight end. Actually, well-conceived play. He had him with the dive fake, but it seemed to get tip at the line of scrimmage. Jordan Danner, 6'4", 215-pound senior, caught eight balls this year. Has been pressed into hunting duties as well and does all the placement kicking. They send Walker to the right. Again, they're in the eye. Behind Jackson Jones, Lennox, the fullback, Spencer, the tailback. Again, the fake, they give it to Walker coming around. Walker's got some room, but a nice tackle tripped up by Traxel as Walker crosses the 25-yard line. So that's the end of the first quarter with the score. Shinoa, seven. Toyota Northwestern La Harp nothing will be back before we start the second quarter let's check in with Yvonne Simmons Yvonne Mike just a really quick note after the end of that first quarter the coaches for Northwestern were questioning the defense's intensity and the focus and wanted them just to get going get their butts down there 
and stay in it. Okay. See what happens now. Of course, they're on offense. Jackson Jones again the bootleg. And Jackson Jones sweeps right. Gets the first down and more to the 35-yard line. You know Jack. Shanoa was looking for that. They've seen the films, but Jackson Jones still was able to uh, grind out first down yardage and more. They do an awful lot of series plays. In other words, prior to that, they ran the same look and gave it to that reverse flanker coming around. There they faked it, and he continued with the ball on through. And, of course, being 6'3", six, uh, six, 205 pounds, he can get some tough yards inside. Walden is quick to the near side. First and 10 from the 34-yard line of the Thunder. Jones. And man open. Looking deep. Deflected nicely. Intended for Joe DeVolve. But coming up to do a nice job once again was Cody Leach. And Leach had a chance because uh, DeBold had to wait for the ball to get to him. I'll tell you, Cody Leach was beaten badly. This is the tight end just coming right across. The ball had it been there a little sooner. He is wide open. Just a nice job here at the last second. Good effort right there to deflect the ball. Had he got the ball up there, that would have been six points. Throwing with the win, Jackson Jones now second and ten. Again, the ball's on the 34-yard line. 7-0 Shanoa. Northwestern now on second down. Here is Jones. Pitches to Spencer, and Spencer stacked up after a short game. Again, good read defensively. Looks like Augsburg is in the middle. First quarter statistics. Total yards is uh, the one there. Shanoa, 85-38. to 38. And, of course, uh, despite the turnover, look at that time of possession. Interesting, they're trying to run the option and get on the perimeter, but I think what they have to do before that is they do have to establish the inside game with the fullback so those linebackers will stay inside. They just start sprinting out with, without establishing fullback. It's very difficult to get out in the perimeter on the action. Tim Lafferty looks on. Sayota third and seven. They're three for four in third down situations thus far. Jones again gives it to Spencer. Spencer fighting. Nice stepping. First down yardage to the 45-yard line before Kyle bracing at him, and that was a big play for Northwestern to get their offense on track, keep the drive going. Just a sprint draw, look, you can see he's going back as if he's going to pass. And just a sprint draw to, uh, to Spencer here. He has an eight-yard eight, eight yard average when he carries the ball, a nice job right there. What they did is they got the linebackers to drop out. As he's going back, they're looking for pass. That stretches them and spreads them, and they hand the ball off on the sprint draw look. Good look at Jackson Jones. First down from his own 45. This team trails 7-0. Waldinger split left. They're in the eye. And the give again to Spencer. Spencer tripped up. Beautiful tackle in there by Christensen. Craig Christensen upending him for no gain at the 45. Well, they ran a counter here. You'll watch. We're getting the tail end of it right here where the corner's coming up and making a tackle. That's a, a block tackle, actually, where he's coming up under. He's not wrapping up, but... A nice play. But you can see the guard and tackle pulling right here. What's happening, the reason this is not really going, is the backside is not being drawn down by any fake or any any pressure by the fullback. So the outside perimeter people are just staying home, and it's tough to make that play go. No gain on the play. Second and ten. They go Walker split now right. Pump fake to Walker looking for him, and he's got his man beat. Walker beating Leach. Touchdown, Northwestern. That was a great throw. Just a great throw right on the money. 55-yard touchdown pass. Jackson Jones gave it the pump fake, threw to Walker, and Walker had beaten his man, the defender, Leach. Took the ball over his shoulder, and we are at 7-6 with Northwestern within a point. The key to this is watch the little pump fake right there. That, that just had the corner hesitate just enough right there where he's even with him. But look how well thrown that ball is right on the money. Nice catch, nice throw, six points. And a nice strut right at the end there. Third touchdown on the season for Walker, his first through the air. And now Danner to try to tie things up. Kick is up, kick is good. So early in the second quarter, 9-19 to go, you look at Tim Lafferty, so that's the intensity I want. We're tied at seven. All tied at seven after that touchdown pass from Jackson Jones. 
to Tyler Walker. Banner set to kick it off straight away. Jack, we're seeing the old style straight on kickers today. It really is a throwback, isn't it? I mean, it's a kickback, uh, if you will. Well, whatever. But they're still using soccer shoes. Gracie is in the middle, but this one will go to Bresner. Bresner at his own 20. Gets a block, takes it to the 30-yard line. Good return, good field position, 13-yard return. So Shanoa once again in business, and let's take a look at the touchdown again. You can see the real quick pump fake right there. He lays it up. Excellent throw with the win. That one pump fake was just enough to have the corner hesitate. Puts the ball right over the shoulder. Nice catch, nice strut. He acts like he's done this 100 times, but that's the first time. He must have practiced that. 19th touchdown pass of the season for Jackson Jones. So now Shanoa goes on offense from its own 30-yard line. And a good effort again into the secondary with Kyle Bracey stopped by Shane Moore, junior defensive tackle. In high school football, that first down play is so important to get a good run in there. So you're looking at a whole different strategy here on second down. If you don't have any kind of a gain on that first down, it's really difficult. Now we got a walk off here going against the Thunder. It's going to be a big one, too. We'll have to wait for Paul Tomazzoli to tell us what it is. Let's check. Well, I guess we're not going to hear what it is. May have been a face mask or didn't. I didn't see the uh, flag at all. So it's first down inside Thunder territory and the pitch to Bracey and Bracey tripped up after a gain of about a yard. He's running the outside veer there and actually the fullback would have been a better choice on that. Uh, he was clear and he ended up pitching at the corner never moved because they're in a cover two and uh, which means this, the corner just has the flat. He never was his own coverage. He never got out of that area. Gain of one. Jason Lane splits right. Receiver split left. Second and nine is Bracey again. Breaks two tackles. Spencer after him. And Walker brings him down close to the first down inside the 40. And Kyle Bracey continues to run like a Redbird possessed. And it's interesting that Spencer makes the tackle. He was probably the only one on the field that could have caught him. Actually, this is a great play defensively here to make him go east and west because if he had turned his shoulders up the field, he had an awful lot more running room right there. And there's Spencer coming up making a nice tackle. Jacob Hunt, linebacker, comes into the lineup for the Thunder. Just short of first down yardage. Now they've got it straight ahead. Bresner getting those tough yards down inside the 35 close to the 30 yard line David Spencer Jackson Jones making the stop Shanoa not afraid to move the ball they had said there was a quote in the paper today where where Dean Magro said well we know these guys are bigger we know they're undefeated but we're just going to match strength for strength we run the ball that's what we're going to do and they're doing it again Bresner the quick hit again a gain of close to 10 It'll be a yard or two short of a first down to the 12-yard line. Well, what's interesting is their offensive line only averages 192, but yet the fullback is 205. So, I mean, I can understand why they want to pound the ball. They run the option where they're, they're running right now, the outside beer, where they're doubling on the outside and letting that 205-pound fullback go one-on-one -on -one with the outside linebacker. And right now, he's winning the battle. Score tied at seven. Second and two. And this time, Bracey... Stacked up by a host of blue and gold led by Ryan Kramer, the 270-pound defensive tackle. In the backfield, a loss of four. Was not a good play. You can see right here. Watch the handoff and look who makes the play. He's supposed to run in behind the trap lock in number 74. He bounces a hair outside it, and that allows the defender to make the play. Had he cut in behind the guard, he would have had a bigger play. The guard, 74. Harry Griffith, the twin of Corey, who plays left tackle. So now we're third and five. They send Christensen in motion from the wing. He takes the pitch, and Christensen cuts it back. First down yardage. Yes, with second effort and more. Christensen almost broke it away inside the 15-yard line. He was stopped half a dozen times on that play. What a run by Craig Christensen. Nice effort right there, and that was a situation where you're waiting for somebody else to make the play. Too many people standing around. They run the option inside with the fake to Bresner. 
They pitch it right there. A poor tackle. Another poor tackle. Another one. Another one. Another one. That's just a great effort right here. Now see right here. Whistle didn't blow. Somebody gave up. He got an extra six yards. Cost him a shoe, but he got the extra six yards. He'll take it here as we come back to live action. Looking touchdown, Chad Seaman. Touchdown, Dan Butler to Chad Seaman. And Chinoa striking. Ninth touchdown pass of the year for Butler. For Seaman, his seventh rushing, but his sixth on the receiving end. So just like that, these teams are swinging at each other. Take that. No, you take that. It's 13 to 7. Well, that play was set up by the running game coming down the field. They're pounding inside and then running the option and pounding inside. And sooner or later, it brings that corner up just a step or two. A little play action pass. He's wide open for six. Corey Griffith to attempt the extra point. Butler is holding. And that didn't work, but here's Butler now trying to save something, and he is brought down. So the extra point, no good. It is 13 to 7, 5.55 to go, and we'll look at the touchdown again. Right here's a play action that drew the corner and the safety from that side of the field up just a little bit. You can see right here, that's all he needed was a step or two. Good throw, he's in the end zone. When, you're, when your running game is going, that sets up the, the uh, play action. You can see kind of a bobbled snap here. And uh, there's nowhere to go here. He's got no options. Nobody went out for a pass. And Butler is hoping that maybe somebody will fall down. Dean Magro looks on. His team leads it. 5.55 to go. Right after the score from Northwestern. Sayota. Shanoa comes back. And regains the lead. And they're doing a nice job with the big pullback. I like Darren Bressner inside. He had a great year with 900 yards, and they're all tough guys on the inside. Again, they squid kick. And it's taken by Jesse Jones, one of the special teams players, number 30. Good field position at the 42 yard line. Kicking against the wind. Dean Magro, I guess, figures he'd rather put the ball on the ground. Well, you get better coverage when it's bouncing around, and obviously they do a good job with the deep kick return, but kicking into the wind, it's going to hang up there anyway. So you might as well hope for a, for a mishandling of the kick. 250 yards of total offense so far for both teams. So from the 41-yard line, this is Jones, a quick hit to Devin Lennox. Lennox gets to the 45. Another problem Chano has been having, Jack, and Dean Magro is lamenting his kick return, his kickoff coverage. He said that's why we squib it, because we have just been bad on kickoff returns. Well, if you can't do it that way, you might as well squib it down there and make it more difficult for them to send it, set up their return scheme. Uh, we're looking at a mirror image here of, uh, of the offense. Both these fullbacks, in my estimation, will be a key in the ballgame because we didn't talk about them in the pregame, but they both have over 900 yards, and they get the job done inside between the two tackles. And they're both excellent uh, fullbacks for these two high school teams. Second and seven from the wishbone set. Got him open. Again. Looking long for Dubold. And Joe Dubold makes the play. Bresner makes the tackle inside the 25-yard line. 32-yard pickup on the pass. Dubold getting position, getting a step on the defense again. And again, it's that run fake play action right here just enough to draw the corner on that side and the safety if he's still in the alley to come up nice route right here he's right in the seam running a post flag excellent throw right on the money wishbone set first and 10 from the Shinoa 23 Northwestern on the march up the middle it's Walker he's got a second touchdown Tyler Walker once receiving this one rushing the quick hit the trap sprung him and we're tied at 13 happens quickly just a quick dive and he pops past the linebacker and with excellent speed Tyler Walker 5'10 160 pound senior and he's off to the races well only a minute and 12 seconds gone by since the last touchdown and Walker 23 yard score Danner to break the tie 
Kick is good, so they'll come back up the field. Four minutes, 47 seconds to go here in the first half. And the Thunder have taken the lead at 14 to 13. Simple as playing football. They're doubling at the point of attack with the garden attack, and they just block him. They double up, drive him off the ball, drive him into the linebacker. He just runs a dive course, breaks it out a little bit, off to the races. Touchdown. So the first lead of the game for Sayota La Harp, Northwestern. Right now, we remind you as we get set to kick off, the Chicago Tribune is the official newspaper of the IHSA State Championship. So pick up the, tri the trip for complete coverage of Illinois high school sports. I'm Mike Wiederman along with Jack McInerney. Dave Turner, our sports channel crew in the truck. Seth Vergels is our spotter. Dave Berkson, our statistician. And we are all here bringing this to you live on Sports Channel. Danner to kick it off. Straight ahead, taken by Augsburger at his own 25. Chad Augsburger, pretty good hands for a defensive and offensive lineman and linebacker. Gets it across the 30. Eight-yard return. Chad had that little halfback in him, didn't he? He certainly did. Chad's dad, Bob, is up here helping us spot for Shanoa. Sam Danner, whose son is uh, also down on the field, just kicked off. He's helping us for Northwestern. See, all, that, all that plane catch in the yard pays off in the big ball game. <laughs> well, Butler can't get much better than that, at least passing-wise. And this time, the quick trap. Up the right side, Darren Bresner, who has had a good day so far. Both those running backs have done their jobs. Stopped by the linebacker, Craig Smith, 5'11", junior. Pick up a four. Clock now running at 4.15. Receiver split left and right. Again from the eye, they give us to Kyle Bracey, and Bracey gets turned around, swarm tackle short of the 40-yard line. David Spencer leading that charge, number 44. Statistically, both of these teams run the ball an awful lot, and that's why the pass has been a big play in this ball game because both of them like to run the ball, and of course, off the play action comes those big pass plays that we've seen for the big game. They both play excellent defense. You don't get to the championship without playing good defense. That's what they've done, and so the play action pass has been big for both teams. Third down and two. Again, the quick hit, and Bresner trying to get out of the grasp of Walker. If he did, he would have been gone, but Walker coming up with help from Waldinger made the stop. First down, Shanoa. Running the outside veer, doing a nice job with Darren. You can see he has 44 yards right here, but the big key is the average. Five yards a carry, that's big. And you go to that fullback, and you can get that 10 yards for you. Four, four for four on third down for Chanoa. The pitch to Christensen. This play has worked all morning. Works again as Christensen gets seven. Coming off that wing and taking the pitch from quarterback Dan Butler, Jackson Jones on the stop. The reason that play is going, Mike, is because the fullback has been very effective inside, and that's keeping the inside linebackers as well as the outside linebackers constricted. You can see the dive fake right here. It kind of holds them. And a nice job right here getting the pitch off by the quarterback. And so far, when they've pitched the ball, they've had a decent game. And most of that is attributed to the fullback play. Second down and three of the ball. Inside midfield at the 48. And they cross buck, and the inside handoff goes to Christensen. Christensen close to first down yardage. Just over the 45 is where they had to go, and they will be about half a yard short. Nice play there by Craig Smith, 5'11", 180-pound junior, an outside linebacker. He didn't go with the counter fake, stayed home, and when they came back with the counter, he was right there waiting for it. So Dean Magro went to Eastern Illinois. This is an assistant there in the Bloom High School in Chicago area. Bresner, first down and more inside the 40. Jackson Jones again. We're calling his number a lot as we anticipated we would on both sides of the ball. Under two minutes to go now in the first half. First and ten. We have had three straight series that have led to touchdowns. Two for Northwestern, one for Shanoa. But the Redbirds are driving. Inside handoff. And this one, no, it's the fake. All alone and over. 
Another shooting is nine. Excellent fake. Looking for Nathan Kylander, and Kylander had his man beaten, but the pass, well, it looked catchable, but again, you're throwing into the wind, and it may have hung up just a bit. It's a good throw into the wind. He, he got a little air underneath it. Probably another step or two, it's right on the money, but again, the running game going so extremely good that the play-action fake gets these people wide open. Those The secondary people are coming up for run support, and they're getting beat. Walker, the defensive back, wasn't within five yards of him, so it brings up second and ten, one back set. Butler looking, he's got his man wide open now. And it is into the five-yard line, close to a touchdown. Bresner again, 36 yards. Bresner, he's running, he's blocking, he's tackling, he's catching. Now, what a beautiful play that was. You can see he fakes into the line right here. Notice how the linebacker split out. And then all of a sudden, coming right across is Darren Bresner coming underneath behind those linebackers that were drawn in by the fake. Does a nice job in the open, open field here. And again, coming up with the big tackle is David Spencer. Clock running, under a minute 20 to go. There is Bresner, a 36-yard pass play. And this time it is Bracey, and Bracey is in for the touchdown. So here we go again. 19 to 14. Shanoa regains the lead with 109 to play here in the first half. Well, if you wanted action, you've come to the right place. We certainly have. Running out of the power eye, they just bang it up inside. And again, a nice job by the offensive line. You can see they're getting their power set right here. Fake to the fullback a little bit, but he's the lead blocker along with the, the tailback, and he just powers it up inside for the touchdown. See, they're doubling down inside, and they lead, lead up right there with the fullback. And when you have such short yards to go, you got to close those lanes down, and they didn't do it fast enough, and he picks up the six. Bracy, his second touchdown. Walker has two for Scioto Northwestern. And it is now 19 to 14. Meanwhile, uh, Shanoa has called a timeout here. See if they will uh, go for the single or two point conversion. There is Dean Magro talking to his assistant. The last drives, uh, they have been fairly quick hits. 324, a minute eight, and 338. This last drive, nine plays, 68 yards. Well, as we had mentioned earlier, both teams play the same defense. So oftentimes you spend a lot of practice time, some against your own defense, so they're very familiar with the, the strength and weakness of the particular 4-4. So uh, that could have a lot to do with the scoring right now. Going for two here in the eye. The fake. Butler pitches. Bracey, beautiful play. Two-point conversion as Bracey gets it. Butler might have made it himself, but the pitch to the tailback, Bracey, no doubt, went in untouched, and the quarterback took the shot. Wise choice. Nice fake. It all starts out with the great fake to Darren right here because the linebackers stay home. Right there, you saw 54 Smith close down on the linebacker, and then that forces one extra guy to lose position on the option. There was nobody to cover the pitch. The guy that should have taken the fullback ended up taking the quarterback, and that resulted in the two-point conversion. There is Kyle Bracey. Two touchdowns and a two-point conversion, and his day isn't half completed yet. We have a minute and nine to go, so the way this game is going could well be another drive because uh, they'll be going into the wind. Will Scioto Northwestern. There's another look at Kyle Bracey. You can see all the incentive decals in the backs of their helmets. Again, they squib it. And again, they get the effect they want. Covered up by Spencer at the 26-yard line. Spencer would have had time to get some yardage there had he kept his feet. Well, you think you do the smart thing in that situation. Make sure you have possession. Well, he got the good bounce. He yeah. got that Sunday hop and... Uh, could have got a few yards. He was a little upset with himself that he wasn't able to run it a little bit. Jackson Jones again will lead this team with a minute six to go. And we see Jones. We know he's got an arm. Connected on a 55-yard pass play for a touchdown earlier. They line up in the eye. Secondary playing a little softer now. Jones going to run it. Augsburger misses him. Seaman misses him. 
Three more missed tackles and an excellent run by Jackson Jones out of bounds close to the 45-yard line of Sciota. Well, what I like there is the fact that the secondary was playing softer because of the time knowing that they were going to pass. And oftentimes what happens in situations like this, for whatever reason, teams go to play action fakes, and there, there's no reason they're wasting time. Here they just went to straight drop back, and that uh, they're wasting less time because obviously the secondary knows they're going to throw the ball. Rolling or spread left, bottom of your screen. And again, Jones this time hands it off. Short game. Nobody's fooled among the red and white. John Serta, number 51, and Adam Owens, number 61, combining on the stop. And timeout taken with 46 seconds to go. Tim Lafferty coming out to talk to talk to his team. Meanwhile, we will tell you the broadcast rights to today's football state championship have been granted to Sports Channel and Intersport Television by the Illinois High School Association. Any rebroadcast of this event without the written consent of the IHSA, Sports Channel, and Intersport Television is strictly prohibited. 21-14. Shinoa, the Redbirds are leading the Thunder of Northwestern La Harp. There's the Thunder huddle. Jackson Jones, the quarterback, number nine. Mr. Do-All Everything for this team. But both teams have shown great versatility, of course, in the smaller schools. And we're talking about schools with, with enrollments of 200 or fewer students. So they're fielding a full-fledged football team out of this. Most of the guys play both ways. And the caliber of play never ceases to amaze, but maybe no more so than a day like this where these teams are playing. They started out playing good tight defense. And boy, it's been an offensive explosion. Look at that. Very well coached football team. Nearly 400 yards of offense in the first half. Receiver split left and right in the eye. 46 seconds to go. Jones. Looking for Walker again, and this time it is broken up, almost intercepted. Jason Lane, defensive back there, along with Keith Traxel, to make the play down at the 30-yard line. Just a straight fade route, and uh, they were step for step. He laid it up there, and I thought that uh, he might have had one step. You can see right here, he doesn't have the greatest mechanics in the world, kind of short arms it a little bit, but uh, good coverage right here. And uh, with 40 seconds left, this is what you expect them to go deep and look for somebody to trip or fall down or a tip ball and get an easy score. Well, now they have to pick up the first down with third and eight. 40 seconds left on the clock, first half, trailing by seven. Again, they play fade. Again, over the middle, looking for DeBold, and Joel DeBold has it. Brought down at the 30-yard line of Shinoa. Kyle Bracey making the stop. Again, they went to play action, but right across the middle to Joe DeBold. 14-yard pickup. You can see right here, he kind of looks him off the play fake, and you'll see him at the top of the screen on the left coming across from the post route right near that official right there. Nice job of laying the ball up and letting him run underneath it. Had the other receiver cleared this man out right here, he would have had a big play, but he came back, made the tackle. They got a first down, and the, they have 31 seconds left, so now they're going to think about what they need to do. But you can see right here, it's a good throw and a nice catch. Well, they take another timeout. You also wondered, neither of these teams has played on the carpet. And as you know, on the artificial turf, the crown of the field in the middle is a lot higher than the flanks on the sides. And usually the first couple of passes out in the flat sail about six feet over the receiver's head as the quarterback isn't used to this. But here, that first pass to Walker, he hit him beautifully. Of course, that was a deep play. This one right over the middle. So they're adjusting just fine. Thank you. They're doing a nice job. The, the plays that that really affects more are the ones if you're, the ball is in the middle of the field and you throw out routes towards the sideline because the receiver is going basically downhill. Anything in the middle between the hash marks, they're on the same plane. And, uh, you know, having done so well in geometry, Mike, as you well know, oh, I yes. know all those angles. Ah, I yes. taken a three down. Ah, yes. Well, fingers split to the left from the 29-yard line with 31 seconds to go. Again, this is Jones. Again, he's looking, and this time he had Waldinger out there, but the pass fell in front of him. Christensen on the coverage. 27 seconds left in the first half. Tim Lafferty didn't exactly like the way that play went. Jones, you see his numbers, 135 yards, one touchdown. 
Five for 11, throwing the ball. Second down on the 29. Playing two deep coverage here. Justin Smith now, receiver split left. Jones pumps it, looks for the ball again, but this time it's Traxel to pick it off. Intercepted, keep Traxel on the 10-yard line. And you saw that one coming, Jack, because Traxel had, had that one eyeballed all the way. Well, what he did is he eyeballed Jones because Jones is really looking at his receiver all the way. You can see him right there. He's looking at him. He just lays it up in the air, and of course, the defensive backs, all they got to do is eyeball that quarterback, and he throws it right to him. Keith Traxel, also the backup quarterback for Shanoa, missed a good part of the season. A couple of games had appendicitis midway through the season, but he just came right back and is playing through it. He's okay. So deep in their own territory now with 20 seconds to go, I would think, and that's what they do. Butler takes a knee, and that will finish things off here in the first half. The clock will run down. And both teams will head to the locker room. The Thunder not making any attempt to stop it. So that is the end of the first half, and it has been action-packed. We will take you to the locker rooms. Right now, the score. Shinoa, 21, as you look at its quarterback, Dan Butler. And the Thunder of Sayota Laharp, 14. At halftime, let's quickly go to Yvonne Simmons. Yvonne? Hi, here. we're here with Coach Dave, uh, Dean. Mag Dean Magro. Good momentum swing for you going into the second half. Yeah, we thought we needed that. Uh, we've done an excellent job throwing the ball, and uh, we're, we're having a difficult time adjusting to our formations, and uh, we're happy about that. But we've got a whole second half to play. And your running game is going, going so well, it's opening up the passing game. Yeah, it is. The running's uh, been our key for us all season long, and uh, we're able to run the option effectively today. We thought going in we could run the option effectively. Uh, we've given up the big play on defense twice, and uh, our pass coverage is what's, is what's got us here. But uh, we're going to tighten that up a little bit at halftime. Thank you. Good luck, second okay. half. Mike, back to you. All right, thanks, Yvonne. Well, Jack, um, it has been a wide open first half. These two teams, neither of them known for passing, but they both got a couple of passing touchdowns and uh, can't wait to see what's going to be in the third and fourth quarter. Well, I, I really think that the key has been the running game, obviously, has been outstanding for both teams. And what happens is when your running game is going that well, the play action pass, and every one of the big plays has been a play action pass, and I think that's the key to it. As long as the running games are going well, those quarterbacks are going to have a field day with the play action pass. Secondary's biting. They got people wide open. You make a good point, especially for Shanoa. The line is small, but the backs are big, and they're taking it right to the larger uh, Sciota players, especially they've got the two tackles. One's 240, one's 270. They're showing no fear of Shanoa going in. Well, they're really not, and the mobility is what counts, but the fullback is bigger than the lineman, and they're using that to an advantage, and he's doing a nice job of running inside. The key is first down. They're gaining five and six yards on first down, so that makes them easy choices when you're calling the plays from the sideline on those second and third down calls. Well, if you like action early in the morning, everybody's woken up right now, and we're going to take you over to the Sports Channel Report. We'll go back to the studio. We'll catch you up there, and then we'll be back here with first half highlights. So stick with us. Okay, well, there's the Arts and Crafts Project of the Year. Actually, that is the, uh, the cheerleading group, the Thunderheads, as you can see and read over at uh, Sayota La Harp Northwestern. They right now are trailing 21 to 14 after a very action-filled first half. Jack, you got to get one of those hats. Well, you know, I'm looking forward to it. In fact, I went down there and talked to them if it was possible <laughs> after the ball game to take one home. I don't know how I'll, long I'll last on the tollway wearing that thing. <laughs> I understand. Uh, let's go right to the highlights because there certainly were plenty of them. Starting in the first quarter after both teams... Uh, uh, stopped each other or stopped themselves with turnovers. First quarter, we've got Shanoa scoring first with Kyle Bracey. Just a nice five-yard run. Good job of double team and good effort to get in the end zone right there with the minute, right in the first quarter, first score. 9-19 to go in the second quarter now as we'll take a look at that first touchdown again. Bracey cutting over the right side and he is in there. Kick is good. 7-0. But look at Jackson Jones here with a pump fake and a 55-yard throw. Well, the big key was that pump fake. It was just enough to hold that defensive back for a half a step. Good throw right over the shoulder and a good effort by Walker to get into the end zone here. And then, of course, after he gets in there, he watches TV on Sunday and does his little strut. Ah, uh, yes. 7-7 after the kick. Still in the second quarter. Chad Seaman coming back here off the pass from Dan Butler. Again, a play-action fake. This goes because the running game is going, and he's got him wide open in the end zone for the touchdown. Well, it was bang, bang, bang. Three possessions, three touchdowns. 
Walker coming right back, his second of the game for the Thunder. Simple dive, double team at the point of attack. Good effort here by Walker, just bounces outside. He's got his second touchdown, and he knows how to make that move in the end zone. With the uh, point after, it was 19 to 14. And coming back, once again, is Bracey for a second touchdown, and here's the two-point conversion make it 21-14. Good fake. This is what got him down there, the option. They fake for the fullback up inside, and they get the ball outside on the pitch, and he's got his two-point conversion. Well, taking a look at the stats, things look pretty even. A lot of offense over 400 yards in the first 24 minutes, Jack. Well, I like the rushing offense right here by uh, Chano, and of course, that's, that's the fullback. Bresner's getting an awful lot of yardage inside, and that's what's helping the ball being able to throw the ball on their play action pass. They've done a nice job. Both these teams are very well coached, play good defense, but at this point, it's really the offenses on both sides are doing the job. Well, 135 passing yards for Sayota Northwestern. Of course, 55 was that uh, big passing chunk on the pass to Walker. What do you look for in the second half? More of the same? I absolutely think it's going to be more of the same. They both play the same defense, so that's a mirror image. They're both doing a nice job running the ball, and all it is really is the, is the play action passes. Who's getting open? Who's putting the ball on the money? I think that what we're going to look at is more option as far as from the standpoint of Northwestern trying to run the fullback a little more inside. They've tried to go outside, but the linebackers have been doing a nice job. The reason that Chanoa is running so well is because the fullback is having a big game inside, and that's been the key for the option. More and more it looks to be uh, the last person or the last team to have the ball is going to score and is going to win. We'll see what happens. We will take you back on the field. We'll bring you second half action. We'll talk to Tim Lafferty over at uh, Scioto Northwestern and bring you everything right here from Hancock Stadium. Back at Hancock, Hancock Stadium. The Redbirds lead the Thunder 21 to 14. Mike Lederman with Jack McInerney, the first of six state championships. And of course, coming up right after this game, we will have the two-way championship. Central A&M against Leroy at uh, 1230. And then uh, this afternoon, we'll bring you the 3A matchup. Defending champs Spring Valley Hall against Carterville. Then Metamora against Perennial Power Providence. And tomorrow, of course, the big 5A and 6A matchups. Let's go down to Yvonne. We're down here with Coach Lafferty right now for Northwestern. Coach, 21 points for Shanoa. Already more points than anyone has scored in the playoff defense adjustment. Oh, we've got to do a better job up front. I think they're just handling us up front. If we don't do a better job up front, we're in for a long day. And the momentum for the Shanoa going into halftime, what would you say to your offense? We, we know we can score. I, I believe we can score. We just got to play defense. The defense is the key to the game for us. If we don't stop them, we're, we're, we're you know, basically we can't come back. You, got, you can't trade points with people. Okay, thank you. Thank Good you luck much. second half. Mike, back to you guys. All right, thanks, Yvonne. Good job. Well, second half again, uh, how much at this level can you adjust offensively and defensively? I guess both these teams don't have too much offensive adjusting to do as we look at Jackson Jones. But what can you do defensively in the locker room, Jackson? Well, I think what he mentioned, obviously, you know, they're not going to make any major changes defensively. They just need, need to get some people that are maybe getting a better effort. Now, somebody might be getting handled up front. Uh, maybe they're doubling the center and the guard or doubling on a down guy or some adjustments along those lines, maybe just based on personnel inside. You can't make major adjustments uh, because really both teams are playing pretty well. Uh, and I don't think it's a it's a situation as far as one outplaying the other one that greatly. I think it's just a few minor adjustments, maybe inside with personnel. Somebody needs to make a little move over, shade over an outside shoulder, or get in a gap. Minor adjustments like that might make the difference. And of course, that might throw off the blocking schemes. Whenever you're playing an option team, you do need to give them different looks up front. And I think uh, they might be some adjustments they might have made. I saw both coaches, Tim Rafferty, there before him. Magro. Both these coaches are in their first final. As we mentioned, it is the first final for the school for Toyota Northwestern. Chanoa was here back in 1979 when uh, I think uh, today's students were barely a gleam, right? Probably. An exciting time for these kids to be down here for the first time, and especially when your communities and you don't have, you know, with the 5A and 6A, you have such large communities. Down here, you have a, a composite of three or four different communities I love all it. over. I love it. You come down, as we showed you at the beginning of the uh, program, the newspapers are full of it. It's not sports news. It's front page news. The whole town is decorated and, of course, being so close 
uh, to uh, Hancock Stadium. That's where Shinoa is, just uh, about a half an hour up the road. There's a lot of activity here. Remember, this evening's IHSA 3A and 4A games will be on Sports Channel Plus live starting at 4.30 and 7 o'clock or thereabouts. If your local cable system does not carry Sports Channel Plus, well, what's wrong with them? The game will be played in their entirety later tonight. We'll replay them. A 3A game, Carterville and Spring Valley again, 11.30 tonight. That's the replay. The 4A game, Metamore and Providence, taped replay at 2 a.m., so set your alarms. Meanwhile, get yourself Sports Channel Plus, get on the horn to those cable companies, and tell them to get with the program. As we are ready to go here, Shinoa will receive, and they will be defending the goal to our left or the north. And you look again at Jordan Danner, who will be kicking off. Interesting with these smaller schools, you have so many players that go both ways, and of course, both teams only need one bus to get to the games. <laughs> uh, you get these five and six A, they're they're bringing four and five buses for their players alone. And these are smaller rosters, obviously, and uh, more kids get an opportunity to play. Well, Chanel especially feels very thin. Only 32 players on the entire roster kicking it off for Northwestern, taken by Bresner. And check it, uh, the freshman, that is uh, Bresner. Darren Bresner, the senior, makes the play. Returns the kickoff 18 yards, tackled by number 56, Phil Driscoll, a backup linebacker for the Thunder. So the ball at the 34-yard line, and Shanoa, which used an interception to stop a late first-half drive by Northwestern, will start first series here. They use the wing back, that is Christensen. And they give it inside, and Bresner gets nothing. Now there was an adjustment right off the bat. He jumped in the gap and just shot the gap inside before they were able to get away with the uh, with the option play to the fullback. He made the big play. So that could be a minor adjustment that they made, but it paid off already. Ryan Kramer, the 265-pound junior, making the stop. Receiver split right. Again, they give, and this time cutting back and getting some yardage is Craig Christensen, that wingback. Now, Kramer made the same play on that play right there, but they went with the belly and gave it to the second back and not the fullback. Now, Kramer brought down the fullback, but it was the second back through on that play. Pickup is six, third and four, clock running. 11 minutes to go here, start of the third quarter. Chinoa with the ball, leading by seven, 21-14. See the complexion changes already, and the first time they've been averaging five yards, and there they lost two yards. Here's the pitch back. Bracey, ball is loose. Thunder says it has it, and they do. Trouble there, it is Shane Moore, number 61. There he is, the junior defensive tackle, recovering the fumble by Bracey, and that play had disaster on it from the get-go. Well, they're doing a much better job here playing the, playing the option. You can see right here, Spencer coming up. It's just a poor pitch. He takes his eyes off the ball, but the key to this is, in order to make this play happen, you've got to have people around the ball, and that's what pursuit, pursuit pays off. Jackson Jones for Northwestern, the quarterback, and the wishbone attack. Somebody may have left early. It looked like over on the right side, one of the linemen, maybe Sam to counter the right guard. And the flag goes down, so we'll see what the penalty is. Yep. In motion. It cost them five yards. Take the ball back to the 42. So that's not what you want after a good break and a turnover. It certainly is not. But they did want to stop them on that first drive. They got more than they one on that first, first drive as far as taking over the possession here in this kind of field position. But they certainly did not want them to have a long drive. So now they're in good field position have an opportunity to drive down the game for a score. So a first and 15 from the Shinoa, 42. Devin Lennox, the fullback, breaks it. And Lennox gets the first down and more inside the 25. Quick hit for number 40, Devin Lennox, 24-yard line. Christensen makes the stop and an excellent run by the fullback Lennox. You can see right there they double-teamed the tackle, and he just with quick feet hit the hole quickly before that linebacker could slide over and make the play. And that's a big first down early for them. And as you, 
Heard the coach mention he knew they could score, but could they stop him defensively? Well, they stopped him defensively in the first series, and now they're driving in for a score here. First and ten, the ball on the 23. Again, the wishbone set. And the option again, this is Lennox. Jackson Jones does a very good job disguising the ball. Lennox gets a couple of yards there. Chet Augsburger and John Serta combining for the stop. Well, they didn't run Lennox very often in the first half, and I and I really kind of thought they would. He had over 900 yards in the in the regular season, and, and a key to running the offense, as far as the options concerned, is that the fullback has to be a banger up inside. He is the fullback. So that's the left half. Walker on the right in the ball. And Jackson Jones, good play. Ball comes loose, but Jones is already down. Excellent play, Chad Augsburger. We've been calling his name a lot, the middle linebacker. Brings up a big third down and 11. That was an excellent defensive play, and that play was made from the back side. He came in behind the option, not in front of it to make the play, but coming flat down the line behind the quarterback and makes the big play. Third and 11 from just inside the 25. Again, a wishbone set, two tight ends. Jones to throw it, has his man, but in and out of the hands of Spencer. Craig Christensen on the coverage. And now it'll be fourth and 11 from the 24, which would be about a 40-yard field goal with the win. Danner can kick him that far, but they are going to apparently go for it here early in the third quarter, trailing by seven. And he might be able to kick it that far, but I, in the first few extra points, a little shaky. A little shaky. I don't know that I uh, put the positive in the bank on that. The ball to the left. Walker split to the right. The eye back set. Tight ends wide open. And he's got him down inside the 10 yard line. And it is first down yardage. Goes to Jordan Danner. 18 yard pickup. And Not Jordan Danner, whose dad now is puffing his chest out here in the booth, makes a big play. The coverage dictated this pass. The tight end just ran it. The two safeties were on the hash marks. They dropped outside to cover the perimeter people. The tight end splits the seam up between the safeties. Good read by the quarterback. Dumps the ball in there. Real easy first down catch there. Eight receptions during the regular season for Danner. He's got a couple here this morning. First and goal from the eight. Lennox. Not much. Stopped again by Augsburg. Big play right there coming up on first down to make that play. Well, both teams have had success on third down. Second and goal. They're back at the nine, so we lost about a half a yard there. Back to the wishbone. Spencer swinging it wide. Spencer cuts it back and knocked out of bounds by Jason Lane. But he gets the ball inside the five. Bring up the third down. Well, as you can see, they're changing up. They run inside and they bounce it outside, and they're putting a lot of pressure on this 4 4 front that Chanoa is running. And uh, I got to think right now, we're going to see we've got two more plays here. This is obviously two down territory right here from the four yard line. Bring in Lucas Huffman. He plays the right back in the wishbone. Along with Spencer and Devin Lennox. Third down here. Jones to throw it again. In the end zone has his man. Touchdown, Spencer. Good play action fake there. And I, and I like the idea about getting Jones out on the perimeter because now he's got an option to pass or run if the if the secondary and the outside linebacker play him as the runner, then those backs coming out of the backfield are wide open, which they were. So that's a great play down the goal line is to get your quarterback, if he's got any agility whatsoever, out on the perimeter, gives you an option to run or throw. So the turnover costly for Shanoa as Northwestern moving right down the field and scoring. Danner for the extra point to tie. And he does so with seven minutes, 47 seconds left to go in the third quarter. We are tied again in the 1A championship.
tied at 21. Scioto Northwestern La Harp has just scored. And Jordan Danner will kick it to Kyle Bracey in the middle, flanked by the freshman. And the freshman takes the ball. Josh Champion. Good coverage by the special teams on the kickoff. And Champion comes up short of the 20-yard line. And that is where Shinoa will work after an 11-yard return. Meanwhile, the touchdown by Spencer set up with a nifty pass on third down over to the tight end. And, of course, they use the double tight end set. Well, you can see he's going right down the middle. He's splitting the safeties who were sitting on the hash mark. So that's big. Jordan Danner, 6'4", 215-pound senior. Big target. Back to live action, a short burst. And we'll take it to the touchdown after Bresner goes for a couple of yards. Here's the touchdown from four yards away. See a good, good fake here. Gets the quarterback out on the perimeter a little bit, a little roll. Puts two men a flood route, and he's got a touchdown. Chanoa with a second and eight. Working into the wind behind Dan Butler. And they give it to Bracey, and Bracey looking, and Bracey is swallowed up by Ben Housewright. Housewright, a six-foot senior, making the play. There's Dean Magro, 22-11 and 11 in his third year as coach of the Redbirds. Bracey wanted to cut that back, and Housewright was the backside uh, linebacker. He made a slow read, and he was not able to cut it back. In the Receiver split left and right. They go over the middle. It is complete across the 30-yard line for the first down. And once again, it is Bresner, and Bresner's doing everything. Catching, running, throwing blocks, playing defense. Darren Bresner takes the ball across the 30. And when you got an athlete that's six foot three, 205 pounds, and can do it all, that's who we want to go to. Lane and Seaman split left and right. Here goes, once again, Bracey. Bracey being pursued by DeBold, and DeBold gets him a tackle for a loss back to the 26. Well, we're seeing some good pursuit by the Thunder. We sure are. And, of course, Coach talked before before the second half about how the defense had to step it up. And you can see right here they're taking good angles. They're doing a good job of pursuing. He's never, never able to break the perimeter seam there. Loss of four, second and 14. Bracey in motion. Tight end. The fake. Got his man. In and out of the hands of Leach. Defense by Walker up by the 50. Walker had his man beaten. Also had, uh, rather, Leach had his man beaten. He also has about five inches on Walker, but Walker made a nice play to break it up. See, the play action fake doesn't hold anybody right here. He just kind of throws it up for grabs. Not a lot of room to work on the sideline there, but I think they'll come back to this play because when they ran them back in motion, that took the corner out, and the tight ends were wide open up the seam. But he didn't see him initially. Maybe the uh, coach in the press box called it down. Double wing, third down and 14. Over the middle, incomplete. Intended for Bresner, who wants a flag and gets one. Bresner, double coverage there. And Spencer may have hit him early. Now, what happens in a situation like this, Mike, as the offensive coach in the press box sees that opening, like we mentioned, the tight ends were open in the middle, so does the defensive coach for the other team up here, and he calls down and says, you got to close that seam off so it That's works both ways. Defense. And we've got an interference First call. Down. First down. So Shanoa gets its drive kept alive by penalties. Few penalties in this game, which well is a, game. a good sign. A big one there. Of course, we have the... Uh, Interference on the punt earlier that led to a touchdown. It's tough when these penalties continue to, to keep a drive alive. Those are the ones at the back there. 537 to go and fighting for a couple of yards. For Shinola is Bresner. House right again in on the stop. No doubt the Thunder defense looks a lot more aggressive and got a lot more gleam in its eye than it had in the first half. Maybe sometimes when you're 13-0 and and you've basically steamrolled opposition, you just aren't ready, especially here when you're basically playing a home team. Shinoa technically the visitors, but obviously 
A lot of fans have come down. Here's the pitch to Bracey, and Bracey being chased to the sidelines and out of bounds. Good pursuit. Waldinger making the play, stringing that out for a game, short game. Bring up a third and six. They are really flying to the football. I mean, we had a, you know, the wide angle here. You could see how fast those secondary people are flying to that football. They're not being held now by Bresner inside. So I think we're gonna, you're gonna see some more play action passes here because. Aside from the fact that he's got third and five, uh, they really are not respecting the pass right now. They're just really flying on the run. All tied at 21. Under five minutes to go, third quarter. Fourth and five. Got to get the ball just past midfield. Here's the pitch again, and again it's a poor pitch. This time covered up by Bracey inside the 40, but that's two straight pitches from Butler that have not been good ones. Joe DeVold in there for the stop. Well, the faster you attack that fullback, he's got a pitch. You can see right here, he's not ready. He's looking at the guy up screen, not number 73, and that's why it was a bad pitch. He thought he had more time to work. He came in on his blind side, and consequently, the bad pitch. They're doing a much better job of playing the option. Well, Brett House right again has done very, very well this second half, coming in from his right end position for the Thunder. So back to punt. Will be Leach. Twin safeties. And this again is a off the side of his foot lands and takes a backward mounts down by Chad Seaman at the 37 yard line. So good field position after a 24 yard punt. 401 to go. And Dean Magro not happy with that. We are tied at 21. Well, this field position is, is obviously very good for Northwestern. Let's see what they can do with it. Well, they scored the last time they had the ball. They have been driving. Give us to Devin Lennox. And Lennox, whom they have been using here in the second half, as you said, Jack, across the 40 to the 42, John Serta makes the stop. And Lennox doing the bulk of the work here. And the bulk of the work early on first down, he picks up five yards again. That's so key, that first down play. And, of course, being able to have that fullback pick up four and five for you to crack is very important. Opens up your passing and also sets up your feature back, Spencer, at the tailback spot. And this is Spencer, and this time Spencer is met by a host of white shirts, and he is taken down back at the original line of scrimmage. He'll lose five. Looks like Adam Owens, number 61, leading the charge in the tackle for a loss. Swarming defense here. Well, you can see also the penetration beyond the line of scrimmage, and that's the reason for the play. They just get so deep into the backfield, there's absolutely nowhere for him to go. Nathan Kylander, the defensive left end, also in on that stop. Third and nine. Ball back outside the 40 at the 37. High set up. Waldinger split left. Again, the play action. Jones looking long and overshoots his man. Closest to it was Christensen. So this will be a rare opportunity now for Sciota to punt. Well, that was the same route that they ran for the touchdown. Just a little roll rolling out by the quarterback and a flood route with a with the flanker doing a deep out and the back coming out of the backfield in the flat. But they did a nice job of coverage there and took it entirely away from him. So Danner will punt. Again, he's taken over the punting duties here in the playoffs after Jackson Jones, who again does about everything else for this team, was injured, pulled a ribcage muscle that hasn't hampered him too much, but certainly stops him from getting that right foot extended. So Danner's done well, averaging about 34 yards a kick. Kicking it to Seaman and Bracey. Gets good foot into this one with the win. Back to the 25. And down goes the freshman, number 24. After a 27-yard uh, punt, Josh Champion taking it. 37-yard punt, you should say. And once again, Shanoa will go to work.
Well, look at the difference in the offensive production. Hasn't been much for Shanoa so far, and here is Bracey. Almost gets him out of minus as he picks up close to five yards across the 35. And once again, it's Brett Houseright. Now there, that's the first time we've seen the power eye set in the middle of the field. The only time we saw it before was when they were down on the one yard line, which they scored their touchdown out of that set. So let's see if they feel as if they need to stay in this to just run the ball down their throat. And they are getting the power eye. Under two minutes to go, the power eye, and again they go to Bracey, and Bracey fighting his way, won't go down, gets to the 40, a pickup of three yards. It'll bring up a third and a short two. Give Bracey a lot of credit. He was stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Tyler Walker and Moore coming up to make the stop after good second effort turned a negative into a positive for Shanoa. Well, that front four of Royer, Moore, Kramer, and Housewriter right at this point handling the front five of Chinoa during at least this quarter. Power eye on third down. Again, they give it to Bracey, and Bracey with second effort gets the first down. Jackson Jones stopping him, but the drive continues for the Redbirds. Remember, coming up right after this, the 2A championship, Ron Rivera joins Jim Blaney. They'll bring it to you live here on Sports Channel. We'll be back this afternoon for 3A and then 4A in the evening. And tomorrow, we'll be here for the 6A game. Won't that be something? Lincoln Way and Wheaton Warrenville. Joey Catholic, not Carmel in the 5A. And right now, let's not take anything away from these two teams that have been just mauling each other as Bracey swings the left side. Spencer and Walker making the stop. But again, once again, Bracey and Chanoa in general getting good yardage. On first down, gain of five. Well, here again, they're just running out of the power eye. They're getting a surge at the point of attack, and they're settling for that four and five yards of the crack. They they broke away from their eye formation where Bresner was the uh, the feature back in the first half with the option, and uh, now they come back with it right here. Second down, short yardage. Gain here and driven back again is Bresner. Ryan Kramer. Trying to pancake. And we've got a Thunder player down as Waldinger, but Bracey helps him off, so he looks to be all right. And again, it's third down and two. But we'll have to wait with that because that is the end of a very quick first quarter. We did get a touchdown from Spencer on a pass from Jones. So we are tied at 21. We'll bring you the fourth quarter, maybe more after this. Fourth quarter as we look at Hancock Stadium, the lights have been turned on from the beginning. It has been cloudy, overcast, but the rain that has been predicted is not here yet. We are tied and a third and one for Shanoa and going straight ahead and getting the first down are the Redbirds with Darren Bresner, who has been just carrying the load here. Ryan Kramer making the stop. Let's take a look at the statistics. Through three quarters. Well, pretty even, as you, would might, as you might expect. Total yardage is even. You can see on the passing, and those basically were the two big throws. First down, Butler on the play action. He's got Bresner over the middle. Bresner to the 25, and Bresner on an excellent play. Finally brought down by Craig Smith, 21-yard pickup, and the Redbirds are in business again. Deep in Thunder territory. Here's a man who's done a day's work. He certainly has. Play action pass. He's coming off of the out of the wing over the middle here. Gets in behind the linebackers and underneath the secondary. And he, of course, was their leading pass receiver coming in this ball game with 18 catches. First down from the 23. In motion, the wingback Seaman and the handoff inside. Once again, you know who. Bresner again, short game, trying the left side of the Northwestern line. Good look at Dan Butler, as we told you at the beginning. Not a spectacular statistically, a spectacular player statistically, but he is running the offense very smoothly. The drive continues, second down from the 21. Again, an inside handoff, and not much there for Bracey. They've really st uh, stifled Kyle Bracey in this ball game. I mean, he's the speedster, he's the big yardage guy, but uh, haven't been able to get to him. Let's go down to Yvonne. Hey, you guys, 
we've rounded up some guys that played in that 79 game. Unfortunately, they got second place. Does it bring back memories for you guys? Yes, it does. Real good memories. We're uh, real happy to be here to support our team. And Coach Dan Gross played with us on that 79 team. We're awfully proud of him that he's got a chance to return here also. Here's yes. Butler looking deep. Sorry, Yvonne, into the end zone. Intended for Jason Lane, broken up. And uh, Walding around the coverage as they went for the touchdown right there. Yvonne, go ahead. Sorry to break in. Here's Juniors. What did that mean for you guys coming back the next year? It was very tough for us. We had to repeat again, and we made it to the playoffs again, but we fell short, and we're hoping this team can redeem, the, can redeem what we didn't do in 79. Quickly, any advice for those guys on the field? Uh, just have a good game and uh, keep put, put, punching it in here. They're having a tough time playing defense. Okay, thanks, you guys. Enjoy the game. All right, Yvonne, thanks very much. Meanwhile, Shanoa has taken a timeout, and this is a critical decision here. Fourth and eight from the 21-yard line of Northwestern. Shanoa with the wind. Well, I haven't been in, overly impressed with the kickers as far as with the wind from uh, even based on the extra points. I've got to think right here they're going to run the option possibly and try and get out on the perimeters they had successfully early. Uh, because uh, Bresner has been running well inside. So I'm looking for either the option to get out on the perimeter or play action pass in here. Corey Griffith, the kicker, has kicked a 37 yarder, his only field goal for the season, one out of two. And of course, one of the things we don't know at what game that was in, at what part of the game, it could have been a very non pressured field goal. And of course, down here, they're all pressure, kicking under this kind of pressure for the center, for the holder, for, and for the kicker. Well, Sayota with the fourth down conversion. This is the first try by Shinola, so he's going to kick it. They're going to try that kick. What do I know? The 11th play of the drive. Again, they are with the wind that's blowing straight, literally coming up from the south. They're kicking north. This will be a 37-yard attempt. And well right, but the whistle blew, and... A flag is on the field, and they're going to get. It's going to go against Northwestern, apparently, from the preliminary signal. So a big break here for Shinoa. And it won't be a first down. Nope. But it'll give them a situation where now they're going to be about two yards from a first down. It could change the whole complexion. I don't know that they'll kick it then. Well, uh, Paul Thomas, all these mic, I guess, isn't working, but that was an encroachment play. I guess one of the defensive players either lined up in the neutral zone or broke the plane. In high school ball, you cannot get back on defense. Once you uh, commit or break the plane, you cannot jump back the way you can in the pros. So it'll be a fourth and three. This changes the whole scenario here. I think they're going to go for it. Racy lines up at the tailback. Bresner at the fullback spot. Fourth and three from the 16. A pitch to Bracey. And Bracey's got the touchdown to break the tie. First down, touchdown. Boy, did that play work well. Kyle Bracey, 16 yards. They had bottled him up throughout the third quarter into the fourth. And Bracey shows you why he is their leading ball carrier. Well, it, he showed you the speed, but the key to that play was Darren Bresner, Bresner inside with the fake. It, and it was a good ride by the fullback. Dan Butler did a nice job of the option hanging inside on the fake, which squeezes those linebackers inside and keeps them off the perimeter. And that was the key to to uh, getting Bracey in the end zone. Corey Griffith for the kick, and it is blocked. So a big extra point not converted. Good play by, it looked like Craig Smith, number 54, the linebacker coming in to block it. Meanwhile, Chanoa's got the lead, 9.56 to go. We'll be back. Always a compliment of fine refreshments here at Hancock Stadium. Meanwhile, Chanel is finding a very refreshing lead at 27-21. Certainly the way this game is going, you would hardly think that's enough to salt this game away. Again, they squib it. And once again, covering nicely for Northwestern. And we'll show you the touchdown again. Good right here. The key was the fullback, the good fake in here. But Dan Butler does a nice job of putting the pitch right on the numbers. And of course, right here, he's tight roping down the sideline. And Kyle Bracey gets the score. Again, see how he draws him in with the fake. Good block by the flanker out here. 
And Kyle Bracey just tiptoes right down the sideline into the end zone. For See the that shot score. Bracey took uh, yeah. after he handed it off. Breaking through, look at Spencer. He's got one man to beat. Christensen as they double back. Spencer's gonna go. 63-yard touchdown. Hello, David Spencer. We're tied again. Well, we're not getting the chance to, to swallow or change our shoes or anything here. They're really going back and forth. And the key to it is, I guess, who has the ball last. But that extra point right now is looming very large. First play of the drive, 62 yards. David Spencer, he gets into the act again. His second touchdown. And he really has been a step away most of the afternoon. And there he showed you the open field ability that he really has. Danner to break the tie. And we told you that extra point would be important. So Jordan Danner makes the kick that puts his team up by one. Cut right here. This is just an excellent job of open field running. You can see right here that uh, he doesn't have the angle and he cuts back right here against the grain and uh, makes a nice job of going all the way back against the grain. Has excellent 4 6 speed and right here it's just a matter of who's running out of gas first. And his tank is a little fuller than the rest. Well, Jason Lane missed him early as he was picked out there. Traxel couldn't get him and the Thunderheads are booming. Nine minutes, 39 seconds to go. And Northwestern has the one-point lead thanks to the run by that man. Well, he is the fastest player on their team. 5'10", 145-pound senior. Did a great job of showing us his 4'6 speed there. Can have a kick it off. And he tries the onside kick. Ball is free. Picked up by Shinoa. It seemed as though there were nothing but blue shirts around, and somehow Craig Christensen came up and swiped that little thing. I don't know. I'd like to ask him if that was intentional. I, I, it looks like to me he just missed it. Boy, it does too, because the ball. Yeah. When you're on sides, you, you when you're on sides kick, you don't give it that kind of a coach. Set. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think that that was intentional by by any stretch here. I think he just took his eye off the ball and missed hit it which I do quite frequently during the summer. Well, I'm asking Dad, and uh, Dad Sam was our spotter, just sort of shrugs his shoulders. Here is Gracie now. Gracie, Dad takes no responsibility for that kick. Close to the 50-yard line, Jackson Jones making the stop. Clock running, 9.25 to go. Pick up of four, brings up second down. There is Bracey. Chinoa, six first downs this half. Three for Northwestern. Christensen in motion on the wing. They give it to Dresner, and Dresner about a yard short of a first down. House right, Brett House right again, making the stop. Really doing a nice job running him up inside in the right, right tackle. Adam Owen, 6'3", 205 pound senior in the right guard. Augsburger, 5'11", 180 pounds, are doing a nice job getting him open, and they've been, to, for the most part, running to the right side of the line of scrimmage. 8.30 to go. On third and one, inside handoff, driven back, but getting it with second effort, getting the first down, we think, was Bresner. And it is. First down, Redbirds. These change crews are getting their workout today. Overcast day, temperatures going up to 40. Really perfect weather here for football. First and 10 from the 44. Butler, the pitch. Christensen, good cutback. And Craig Christensen, eight yard gain. Ball is loose. And once again, Sayota has recovered. Craig Christensen, two excellent moves. Craig Smith recovered it, but wait, wait. Now the officials are saying what? Down by contact? Yep, the way it's looking. Well, down. Uh, premature celebration. Watch the pitch here. 
You see the pitch. He's really getting hammered down here, but over pursuit and the cutback. And let's see right here. The ball is That's a fumble. Gone. That's it sure a fumble. Is. Absolutely a fumble. A, a break there for Shanoa. Brett Housewright drawing the ball loose, but it was called down by contact. And look at that play by Joe DeVoe. Catching Boise in the backfield for a loss back to the 43. He came so far up the field, they really wanted to get outside him, but they actually kicked him into the running back. The running back bounced outside the blocker, and uh, they got a gift on the fumble, and now they're third and nine. Lane split left. Wing back is Seaman. Looking way ahead for Kylander and overthrown. Fourth down, Shanoa. Kylander had his man beaten. Waldinger and Spencer actually double coverage there, but it was a tough throw for Butler. And here, fourth down. One would think they would punt. Trailing by one, under seven minutes to go. And Griffith will punt it again. Gets it off on his own 48. Good high kick, hangs up. And it takes a thunder roll. By Kyle Anders. 25 yard punt. No return. But the ball deep in Thunder territory. Tim Lafferty now with the one point lead. 6.42 to go. And into the wind. Um, be conservative. I think we're going to see a lot more here of uh, Lennox running up the ball up inside. They come in the wishbone set. Get it to Spencer and Spencer across the 15 to the 18 yard line. Lane and Bracey on the stop. Spencer runs a lot harder than his 145 pounds would indicate. But with that 4 6 speed, that's how you get 22 touchdowns and 1,400 yards. We have seen excellent effort from all four of the backs, the fullbacks and the tailbacks, two on each team. Of course, you got to give the Lions credit as well. Second down gain of four from the 17-yard line. Two tight ends, the wishbone set. And this is Jones on the keeper. And Jones gets a good block. Jackson Jones down the sideline, steps out of bounds. Still going, the whistle blew. The official is standing back at the 32-yard line. Jones gets into the end zone, but he went out of bounds. Andy Royer bringing him with that excellent block. Jones thinks he's scored, but we'll take a look out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Nice job here. He's just rolling out. He really does not want to throw it. And uh, at 6'3", 205 pounds, you can understand why he wants to run with the ball. And let's just see where he does step out. You can see that a trail official right there doing a great job. Right there, there he is. Right there. Now, if he would have had 12s instead of 13s, he's been <laughs> in bounds right now. You're talking about shoe size, Jack. Okay. Well, he took two steps on the line, and now Jackson Jones is going to have to catch his breath. Take a look at the rushing yardage, and it has turned toward Northwestern here in the second half. But you know, has had the uh, well had the good option when it had to. Now here's Jones. How winded do you think he is? Well, you can bet he's going to hand off. But that 111 <laughs> yards, one of them is on a 63-yard run, so it still has been fairly close. Right. I know I'd hand off. First and ten from the 31 yard line. And he does. Goes the other way. This is Dubo checking number 84 Huffman. Lucas Huffman, the right halfback, coming across on the wishbone. Both these teams will run, run wishbone sets, they'll run eye sets. Jack, again, the advantages of mixing up as opposed to staying with one, one type of setup. Well, it, it puts more pressure on the defense but in, in the case of both these teams they both run basically the exact same defense which is a 4-4 not a lot of adjustments uh, and so far it's been really a, a rushing game with some play action passes for big plays again both ends in tight this is Walker and Walker tries the left side and Christensen upends him but 
He appears to have the first down. It is signaled first down. Five minutes, 13 seconds to go. They'll move the chains and start the clock. Got to make a stop here soon. That would have been the time. Shanoa trailing by one. There's Sayota Northwestern La Harp. The combined school. They lead it. By one point. Under five minutes to go. First and ten. Their own 42-yard line. And a quick play. Tackled for a loss in the backfield. Spencer again. Good play by Chad Augsburger. And that's the kind of play they needed to have right now. And while we wait for the next play, coming up next, there's our whole schedule. The 2A game be a little bit later than 12.30. Then this afternoon, 3A and 4A on Sports Channel Plus. And then tomorrow, a couple of big ones, 5A Joliet Catholic Mount Carmel and Wheaton Warrenville South, the defending 6A champs against Lincoln Way. Quick hitter, Devin Lennox to midfield. And again, that's set up by the series. They're running with the counters and the uh, and the faking to fullback. And this time they give it to him, and the backside didn't stay home, and he had a nice gainer. Well, they'll bring up a third and two. Time starting to be a factor here for Shanoa. Trailing by one, need a stop. They put Huffman on a wing. They set up the eye. That's Huffman number 84. Two tight ends in. And a big, big defensive play. Tackled for a loss. Led by Chad Augsburger again. And Spencer backed up. What a big play by the Redbirds. And they're going to punt. At first he didn't think about it, but I think he didn't realize how much he had to go for. Well, he's got... Almost five yards to go and watch this play right here. A big stun. A great time to call it. And he comes in from behind and makes the play along with Kyle Lander and a nice uh, a nice call defensively right there. That was a big big play. So Danner will punt it. Meanwhile Northwestern takes a timeout again to reset now 259 to go fourth down and four for Northwestern leading by one. You see the whole story there. And Shanoa will be working with the wind. Now, Dan Butler has been more of a running quarterback, but he has thrown for 765 yards and eight touchdowns, so it's not out of the realm of possibility uh, for them to be moving the ball down the field throwing, especially with the wind. But the fact that they've been doing a nice job of running the option, and, of course, the option is a big play series. So uh, if they get decent field position here, who knows? Butler through the air, 99 yards. Be a big punt here. And again, it's against the wind. We'll see if they put a rush on. Single safety back for Shanoa. Doesn't look like it, but looks like they're going to get let down and get it off. And they do end over end kick. And it is down inside the 30. So with 2.51 to go, 23-yard punt by Danner. Decent field position for Shanoa. As you look at Sam DeCounter, who down the punt. Let's go down to Yvonne Simmons. We're standing here with Jackie Spencer, number 44, David Spencer on Northwestern's team. He's done awesome. I'm so proud of the whole team. There's nothing we can really say other than it's a team effort. It's not just the one. And he's just done great. I can't say any more. I understand that it's really been a community effort and community support here. Yes, it has been. And not just our school, but as far as both schools go. The moms always do something special real quick. What's something special you guys have done for them? We have just been there for no, everything. I mean, we've been at every game. We've got two other kids. Wait, oh my God. Darren Bresner. That's Darren Bresner, Yvonne. We can understand Mrs. Spencer's excitement. Darren Bresner gets the first down, 240 to go. Go ahead, Yvonne. As far as the football team goes, just, 
I can't think of anything just individual, just other than being there. We've gone to pep rallies. We've had bonfires. Okay, thank you. Enjoy the rest of the game. Back to you, Mike. Bonfires before barn burners. Now, Butler to throw. What a hit put on by Spencer. Knocked the helmet off the receiver, number 83, Kyle Lander. Wow, what a belt. Good concentration. He's coming right over the middle right here. Pulls up and kind of a sidearm throw. And you can see right there the ball was right on the money. And uh, he really took it in the chops right there. Ball should have been caught. Well, Kyle Lander knew he was going to get hit. And you see his head pull away right before contact. Because that ball was right on the money. And Nick is sort of just watching that. Ouch. All right, second and ten now. 42-yard line, clock at 228. Bresner in motion. Receivers left and right. Butler over the middle, deflected nicely by Devin Lennox. He's very fortunate they have another possession on that throw because that should have been picked off. Chad Seaman, the intended receiver. Third and ten. Right here, he runs a curl route, and that linebacker does a great job of coming up underneath it. Makes a great play. Lennox, 5'10", 190-pound senior. We saw him working beautifully in the offensive backfield and makes a big defensive play. So third and ten. Quick hit. Out it goes to Lane. The hook and ladder. And Bresner gets the first down. Well, the classic hook and ladder. The Jack, I know you don't have any of that at Downers No, side. my father was a fireman, so I know all <laughs> about the hook and ladder. But all he's doing here, the outside man runs a curl route, and the slot back right here, he curls and then just pitches. But the corner never bit on it. You can see right here he was playing softer and came up and make the play. Tyler Walker did not bite on the curl route as he saw the back swinging out of the backfield. First down, Bracey in motion. Butler, good throw, right on the money, on the numbers to Seaman. Seaman taken down by Tyler Walker and Spencer, but Shanoa now on the 30-yard line of Northwestern. Clock at two minutes. They're isolating that corner. They're running a motion to the wide side, which is taking that safety help away from that split end side, and he's that corner's got him by himself, and he's not able to handle him, and Dan Butler's putting the ball right on the money. Clock running now. Chanoa with the ball. Split receivers left and right. They trail by one. Open. Here's the pitch, and this is Bracey. Bracey inside the 25-yard line, brought down by Shane Moore, as well as Brett Housewright. And we're at 1.38 left, and a timeout is called. It's quite a ball game, 28-27, and the Redbirds driving. Chanoa calls it second timeout. They have one left. And we'll show you this last play. Taking a look at the assistant coach there. Again, the option, a big play, dive fake. They all bite on the fullback. Bad angle for the inside linebacker there. Uh, Lennox had the wrong angle, and they get the pitch and a big first down, or big gain, excuse me. 65 yards on 20 carries. Not great numbers, but they have come at critical times. And, of course, a big 16-yard run for Bracey and a three-yard run for Bracey. Two touchdowns for the senior. Well, it's been a nice one-two punch. Check it. Three touchdowns. He got the first one on a five-yard run. Then Walker comes back. A 55-yard pass from Jackson Jones to tie it. Chad Seaman, a pass from Butler, 13 to 7. Then Walker, a 23-yard run to tie it. The extra point made it 14-13. Right now, down by one. Shanoa throwing into the end zone. Oh, great catch. Touchdown, the Shanoa Redbirds. Great catch. Nathan Kylander, who took that heavy shot just moments ago, obviously got the cobwebs out of his head to make an incredible catch. There is Kylander, number 83. Touchdown, Redbirds, his fifth touchdown of the season. Well, the, the big reason for that play is the fact that his birthright, he's 6'4", had an awful lot to do with that play because it was actually excellent coverage. The ball just thrown up high. He went up and got it. Big play under tremendously tough uh, conditions. Big touchdown. Nice, nice throw by Dan Butler. Used in the 1996 football Butler's under a lot of pressure here, and he's rolling out. You can see right here he gets a nice block, and he just barely gets the ball up in the air, but being 6'4", 205 pounds, Highlander does a nice job of going up over that cornerback and makes the big catch. 
Let's take a look right here. He's just running a kind of a, a flag route. And you can see the advantage he has height-wise over there. Well, yeah, Waldinger around the corner. He was 5'11". 5'11". It's like touching the rim and touching the net. Give it to the guy that can touch the rim every time. Spencer was coming over to help, but not in time. So a minute 33 to go. And they will go for the two-point conversion. They missed an earlier extra point, got the two. They're going to try for the two again. Again, Butler's going to try to take it himself and gets it. Big play. Dan Butler. Dan Butler, the quarterback keeper for the two-point conversion. What a well-played football game we've seen here this morning. Two outstanding football teams, extremely well coached. Very exciting football game. And there is still a minute and a half left. And the way they both go at it, we could see two more scores, not just one. <laughs> Redbird fans coming down from I-55 certainly have a lot to cheer now. Sayota. A minute 18, 71 yards on eight plays. There's Dan Butler. He has run this offense well all morning long. We are now into the afternoon. A minute 33 left on the clock. And again, they've been using squib kicks on the kickoff. And once again, they've got Christensen number 20, and he will probably bounce the ball. The deep men are only back at their own 20. Picked up by Spencer, and Spencer trying to break free, but he has wrestled down at the 34-yard line. Number 83. Coming up, that's Kyle Ander again. So he's doing everything right now. 126, trailing by seven. Dean Magro talking to his defense. Jackson Jones, a big play quarterback. Remember, he ran what he thought was an 83-yard touchdown run, stepping out of bounds, though. So this team can strike quickly. Receivers split left and right. Jones over the middle, and it's intercepted by Seaman. Seaman, the interception to the 40-yard line, and Chad Seaman makes the biggest play of his young life. Right there. Well, he waited a little too long going to that tight end, and he eyeballed him the whole way. He was open initially, but by the time he delivered the football, the linebacker had dropped another step or two and came up underneath the underthrown football and comes up with a big interception. Agro checking his watch. Maybe he's got a luncheon appointment. He's going to be late, but he'll take it. Still, though, a minute 18, two timeouts left for the Thunder. So now... Butler will take a knee. And timeout called quickly, a minute 14. Again, you wonder about that. Why not run around and kill some time? Quickly taking a knee. Well, I don't know that, uh, you know, everybody has their own idea about exactly where they're at time-wise, but uh, the way uh, Reznor's been running, it's not that you're looking for more yards or more plays, but uh, the clock is going to be running, and that's what you want to do because you knew that uh, Northwestern was going to call a timeout immediately. The other thing is you got to run that clock down. You get 25 seconds to put that ball in play. And you got to run and get at least 20 seconds off that clock before, before you snap that ball. Redbird cheering section. Officially they are listed as the visitors, but they certainly know this area well. They're just up the road, as we told you. It's a long, long trip. Coming in for Sayota Northwestern, but if the score stays the same, it's going to be a lot longer going home. Team with a lot of experience. There's their sideline. Very exciting football game. Extremely well played. And an awful lot of stars on both sides of the ball, defensively and offensively. Now Butler running. Stay in bounds. Bounds. Stay in bounds, and he does. Oh, and he runs out. Why Dan Butler ran out of bounds. He got kind of pushed out of bounds, but you can obviously he was not going to pitch the ball. I'm sure that that was the first thing they said. Run the option, run the clock, clock down, keep the ball in bounds, and don't repeat, don't pitch it. Well, they will have a third down and three from the 33. That really hurt going out of bounds. 
And the Thunder still have one timeout left. So here's the third down play, and they give it to Bresner, and Bresner, as he has all day long, getting the tough yards, does he get the first down? It looks to be a little bit short. Clock continues to run under a minute now. I think they gave him the mark. Now they'll check the mark, and they signal first down, and that'll do it. That will do it. Barring, as we say, any kind of, well, miracle in the Meadowlands. The Thunder take its last time out, take their last time out, but with the first down mark now, all they've got to do is take two snaps. Jackson Jones, what a game he has played. An All-State defensive back, outstanding quarterback, playing through injury. Done a great job. He's had an awful good afternoon on both sides of the football. Well, the Class 1A championship has been produced and directed by Dave Turner. Our associate producer is Dave Ross. Production manager, Sheila Brown. Vice president of programming at Sports Channel is Mike Bogad. And remote facilities, as always, here at Hancock Stadium, provided by Trio Video of Chicago. And we have had a good one for sure to start. 35-28, Shenoa High School, unranked, unheralded. Third-year coach Dean Magro, a graduate of Eastern Illinois, assistant there, who is assistant at Chicago Bloom. On the verge of his first state championship. This team came down here in 1979, lost the title game, has not been to the final since. The Thunder, they have not been here at all until today, or had not been here at all until today. And what an effort they put together. Well, if this game is any indication of what the next five are going to be like, we're in for a very exciting Thanksgiving weekend down here in Bloomington. Again, running that clock down. This will be the last snap of the game, and there it is. That will do it. Chad Seaman jumps into the arms of his coach. There's your mandatory shower. And the Class 1A champions, the Redbirds of Shenoa High School. They won't have a long trip home, but it will sure be a happy one. And their sportsmanship, Darren Bresner. Talking to one of the Thunder, looked like Tyler Walker there. And boy, you can find so many ways that people played good ball games. The two coaches meeting, Tim Lafferty. And there is a very wet and very happy Coach Dean Magro. Okay, we'll take a break here and we'll come back and talk to the winning coach and recap this one. Awards too. Well, you'd have to call it an upset. The Redbirds of Shenoa High School over Scioto Northwestern La Harp. The co-op, 35 to 28. Let's go to the public address announcer and pick up the awards presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to the awards platform at the 50-yard line facing the West Main stands of Hancock Stadium for the presentation of the Class 1A first and second place individual and team awards. Making the presentations will be members of the Illinois High School Association Board of Directors and administrative staff. Presenting the awards for the Class 1A championship game are Board of Directors and staff members, Mr. Greg Bradley, Secretary of the Board, from Mount Zion High School. Mr. Gary Collins, a board member from Monmouth High School. And Mr. Pat Sullivan, a board member representing Roxana High School. Will Principals, Barbara Schrode of Northwestern and Charles Apt of La Harp. Coach Tim Lafferty and the captains of runner-up Northwestern La Harp, please join the presenters on the awards platform. A special medallion is presented to the principals, and the awards will be presented to Coach Lafferty and his team captains by Mr. Collins.
Now the second place trophy will be presented to the Thunder of Northwestern La Harpe, who finished the season with a final record of 13 wins and one loss. Presenting the trophy will be Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins, if you please. Next will Principal John Pearson, Coach Dean Magro, and the Captains of State Champion, Shanoa High School, please join the presenters on the awards platform. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Illinois High School Association has instituted a campaign to sport a winning attitude, sportsmanship and to recognize it at the state finals. Players, coaches, and spectators of each of the teams competing in this championship game were evaluated by a volunteer panel of judges, winning a banner for sporting a winning attitude at the 1996 Class 1A game is Shinoa High School. A special medallion is presented to the principal and the individual awards will be presented to Coach Magro and his team captains by Mr. Bradley. And now this year's state championship class 1A team trophy will be presented to the Redbirds of Shinoa, who finished the season with a final record of 12 wins and two losses. Presenting the championship trophy is Mr. Bradley. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the awards presentation for the Class 1A Championship game. The Illinois High School Association thanks you for joining your team here well, at Hancock Stadium. Well, there's the first place trophy in the hands of Shenoa High School. State Chad Augsburger, Dan Butler. Boy, was that an outstanding effort from the Redbirds today. Our Pepsi play of the game, and it's a tough one to pick, but you have to go with what turned out to be the winning touchdown. Nathan Kylander up, up on the pass from Butler. He got it. Jack, just a couple of minutes earlier, he had had his bell rung, his helmet knocked off on the pass over the middle. Boy, there's retribution in a big way. It really is. What a way to get back in the ball game. And that's our Pepsi play of the game. We'll be back and talk to the winning coach right after this. 35-28, the Class 1A champion, Shinoa High School Redbirds. Let's go down with Yvonne Simmons with winning coach, Dean Magro. Coach, first of all, congratulations. What a great game this afternoon. You really needed a big rushing day today against a stingy defense, and you got that. Yeah, we thought that, uh, you know, coming into this game, we thought we could run the ball. Uh, they weren't adjusting to some of the formations that we had, and uh, we were able to run our bellies and our veer and, uh, and the triple a little bit on them and giving them a different look, and we thought we could move the ball on offense. Uh, defensively, we had to make some adjustments at halftime. And we talked earlier this week, you said, if we have to pass, we're going to, and you did that effectively also. Right. We know we can pass the ball here. Uh, you know, a lot of people in Shinoa might think, you know, why don't we throw more? And we can throw. But we throw when we have to throw. We try to establish the line of scrimmage like we can here. Uh, these kids have worked extremely hard here in three years. Football's been an all-year-round job for me. You know, I'm very tired right now, but this is what it's all about. I'm not the easiest guy to get along with. with the, but uh, I'll tell you, this is what it's all about. 
And what were your thoughts when Seaman made the interception with a minute and 13 to go? Well, I thought it was over at that time, but I wasn't sure until we got a first down, and then we called the quarterback trap, and, and uh, we thought if we could get the first down, that they, would, they wouldn't have an opportunity to get the ball back. Again, congratulations. Hard work paid off. Go beat your kids. Have a nice day. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks. Back to you up there again. Uh, you, you don't want to be you don't want to be pancaked by uh, by a big guy like Dean Magro, but I guess everybody smiles now. Well, I, I'd hate to see him when he's mad if he's excited <laughs> now and 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 feeling good. Ah, uh, but quite an effort by his team again. They were ranked number one at the beginning of the season, lost two games in a row, fell out of the rankings, and certainly against a team that was undefeated like Northwestern, Chinoa had to be considered decided underdogs, uh, especially when a defense only gives up five points a ball game. Let's take a look at some of the highlights now here in the second half. First of all, on fourth and 11, watch a 16-yard pass coming up to keep a drive alive for Northwestern. This is really a big play right here. He finds a tight end right in the seam between the two safeties. A big target is 6-4, and he gets that big first down to keep the drive alive. And continuing right after that, Jackson Jones, another touchdown pass. This one to Spencer. Just a little roll out with a flood pattern. He finds him wide open in the corner. Tied the score at 21. Meanwhile... Chinoa going ahead here. Once again, that option pitch. Well, it really has been an effective play all day because the fullback inside, and now they got outside and pick up a six-point play. But the extra point was missed, and right away, first play from scrimmage after the kickoff, look at Spencer go. Well, you know, 4-6 speed, Mike. About five years ago, I had that kind of speed, but not those kind of moves. And you can see why he had 1,500 yards and 22 touchdowns. He showed it right there. In your dreams, McInerney. In your dreams. But... With a minute, 33 left. Again, this play of the game right now. Butler to Kylander. Well, the key here is Kylander is six foot four. That's the key. He got the ball up in the air. He makes the big catch over a 5'9 defender. Nathan Kylander, outstanding. Mob by his teammates, a two-point conversion. Made the final score 35-28. Big interception, iced it for Shanoa. Take a look at the final statistics, and it couldn't be more even. Look at the total yardage right there for both teams. Well, it's really exciting when people come to see football coaches love defense but fans love offense and we certainly got a lot of it here with over 600 and some yards of offense well this is just the start of things and right now we're going to send you down the field we'll be back this afternoon for the 3a game but 